Apparently, I haven't finished finding papers by Ferris Williams on his unified field theory that predicts electrogravitic effects and new routes to fusion energy while he was working at Los Alamos National Laboratory in the 1980s. I found a 1990 paper titled Electric Propulsion Study that he is listed as an advisor on. Then I found his patent. Then I found tons of new material. This is like drinking out of a fire hose. This is part 3 of my investigation into the work of Ferris Williams and I will link part 1 and part 2 in the description for those of you that haven't seen them or need a refresher. Before I take you down the rabbit hole with me, I also discovered that Paul Murad, one of the authors with Oak Shannon of the Ferris Williams Memorial Paper, has extensive publications on subjects related to Williams's theory and most of it is much more recent. Check the links for that as well. This video may start to feel like we are getting lost in the weeds, but I want to remind you that this is an attempt to figure out what powers UFOs, aka UAP. I found a 1990 paper from the Air Force Space Technology Center titled, Electric Propulsion Study, with Ferris Williams cited as an advisor and was planning to do an entire video on it. I still would like to do that, but then I found Williams' patent titled, Deuterium Reactor, and evidence that he got it through DOE funding and I fell down a rabbit hole. Perhaps you recall from my previous post that in 2009 Williams stated on the space show that he had his fusion energy predictions being tested by a government agency that was close to publishing results. Well his patent was filed in 2012, but unfortunately it was abandoned in 2015 due to failure to respond to an office action which is likely the result of the fact Williams died in 2014. The patent exists and we have video of Williams claiming this fusion prediction was being tested by unnamed sources, but can we verify Indian head division, whatever that is, was involved? Or at least a potential connection? What is NSWC? NSWC is Naval Service Warfare Center, and Indian head division is dedicated to energetics and their applications in propulsion systems. I found a PowerPoint presentation hosted on a DARPA site with Dr. Oliver Barham's name on it. I also found a YouTube video of him presenting the PowerPoint at a conference. It turns out Dr. Barham is indeed project manager at Indian Head Division and currently working on Low Energy Nuclear Reactions, LENR, aka Cold Fusion Research. I strongly suggest you watch his presentation titled, A Rising Scientific Tide Will Lift All Boats. In the presentation he mentions a 2013 patent held by the Navy and assigned to JWK International that is part of the presented results. He mentions the difficulty in getting things on this subject published requires them to focus on things that don't sound like cold fusion so they focus on other aspects of the process such as measuring the heat or the particles created. This is reminiscent of what Dr. Gary Nolan discusses when publishing research on the phenomena. Notice the Navy patent is for particle generation. If you dig deeper into it they are generating neutrons for fusion reactions but not mentioning that. Dr. Barham also discusses the very real issue of investors not wanting their secret sauce published and that they need to find a way to work with academics to publish non-proprietary aspects to lift the field into mainstream credibility. In case you missed the news, ARPA-E, offshoot of DARPA, recently announced they would be putting $10 million towards the funding of LENR research. Still not taking this seriously? Remember SRI? That place Hal Putthoff did his remote viewing research. The same place that basically invented the internet, AI, and the computer mouse. Well they have been researching cold fusion literally for 30 years. They started as soon as Pons Fleischmann announced their results and never stopped. SRI even published a fairly recent paper on it. So how is this all relevant to Ferris Williams? The answer is that his theory reportedly predicted the results. One of the biggest hurdles in getting the subject of LENR properly funded and investigated is the lack of a good theory of how it actually works. Our current theories say it's impossible, but not William's theory. Not only is this the opportunity to test his theory and give it credibility, but if it's matching the observations it creates a path forward for the proper scientific study of LENR, which would be revolutionary for humanity. It would allow for cheap, safe, abundant and clean energy. It would allow for nuclear remediation to clean up disaster sites and superfund sites. It would allow for compact fusion reactors for space travel. 
And if the dynamic theory is successful in these predictions it means the study of electrogravitics is no longer pseudoscience or fringe theory. Don't forget to check the show notes. Also visit the Reddit link in the show notes for the original source of this content.